there I was, sitting there, elated, playing solo scrims, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, we see that Epic have nerfed jetpacks. This was a pretty big change, or so I thought. But then, a mere hour later, we get the news that they have vaulted mm. jetpacks from competitive playlists. And you might be thinking, oh, wow, okay, this is a pretty big deal. And you'd be absolutely correct. This is the main movement item of Fortnite Season 4 Marvel. And this is the movement item we've all been relying on in all of our matches so far this season. Whether it has been in an unstack lobby or a super stacker, the jetpack has got us through. And now it's gone and we're going to have to rely on a no movement meta to rotate all of our zones. Now I am actually very, very scared of a no movement meta personally. We've literally just come from a Nitro and Fist meta, which I believe has made everyone so lax in the ways of rotating that a lot of players have just forgotten how to rotate now. This makes me scared because I reckon at the start of the season, people could have rotated, but as they got lazy with Nitro and Fists and Fizz, it just became so easy to rotate that people just forgot how. And now we're coming into this season and we're coming into some of the big cash cups with no movement. People are just going to leave it last second. They're going to do terrible rotates. They're going to key you on the rotate. All of these stuff. I'm more worried about getting griefed by other people than I am about griefing myself. Obviously, we have got Fizz in this meta, so it's not a completely no movement meta, but it might as well be. Fizz is okay, but at the end of the day, with the guns in the meta at the moment, you have to be very, very careful with Fizz because Fizz can get you beamed so hard. Therefore, I'm going to be teaching you how to get ready for this no movement meta in this video. Just a couple tips, tied you over the edge, and we can go over some more stuff in a different video. So in terms of the fizz, the times you'll get most beamed is actually when you're going off a high layer. You can be in the air for longer and you can be much more of an easy target to anyone watching. Now the thing I'm going to do to decrease air time is instead of jumping off your high layer, drop off your high layer. You're still going to drop down slower, you're still going to make it a little bit far, but just make sure you drop down as opposed to jumping down. Because trust me, it is not, it is not good. If you jump down, you're probably putting yourself in the air for another at least a second and this allows a lot of people to start shooting you and Fizz moves pretty slowly so people are going to get a pretty massive beam on you. If you want to go forwards at a pretty fast pace you can place two floors outside your box, a floor on the floor and a floor on the roof and then you just have to sprint and jump with the fish. You'll hit your head on the floor and you can like boost yourself forward very slightly. It's a trick that a lot of pros such as most was using in the solo cash groups and it is very very good in my opinion. In my opinion, both of you in a team carrying Fizz is going to be the best this season. Having two people with Fizz is so much better than one because you can share out the charges for every rotate. If one of you dies and the other one has the solo clutch, they still have a Fizz to rotate with, which obviously is better than the majority of everyone else who might not have Fizz. Fizz is still very, very important. It doesn't give you the most boost, but it gives you enough boost to where it's absolutely necessary this season. If you're in the moving zones and next zone's about to pull, make sure you stop popping your fizz a couple of seconds early. This means that when you finally get popped, the zone will have just pulled and you can go instantly. Sometimes it's important to get early during moving zones, and if you miss your opportunity because you don't pop your fizz fast enough, then you could absolutely get held in these games. In terms of other parts of this change that made a difference, this change has made Avengers Chest and Doctor Doom Chest significantly weaker. That means we should have less people landing on those chests to get jetpacks because the jetpacks aren't even in the game anymore. Obviously, they still give good loot, but at the end of the day, a lot of POIs can give good loot. One place that has been heavily buffed, though, is the underworld area of the map. This area of the map has received a massive buff for this update, well, this balance change, because it now has the dashes, and the dashes are the best form of movement. The absolute best form of movement. Peter bought one FNCS, and the main reason he won it was because he had unlimited dashes, and they are very strong mobility items, even if you just pick them up. All you've got to do is land nearby mid-map, maybe top map, but land kind of within a rotate towards that area. You can rotate over there during mid-game, Grab the dashes and you have pretty much unlimited uses of them in the end game. Now you can do a lot of rotates with these. You can fizz ramp upwards and then dash across zone if you have a super super long rotate in your backside. You can hold them until someone's in your box and then edit and dash out so you don't get killed. 
You can even take height. If you fizz and then dash, you can dash up super fast, take height off guard and two tack them. That is also a very, very good option. On top of that, the general versatility of these dashes are absolutely incredible. You can literally rotate any way you'd like and it is amazing for rotating. Be careful though, you want to try not to use only before you absolutely have to. You only have three unless it goes through the Underworld Zone. So make sure you are definitely trying to nail these rotations with just the dashes. One thing I am expecting is Clicks and Vino to do super well this season, honestly. I know it's a little bit off topic, but they were dominating the meta without Nitro Fists last season when we pretty much had a no movement better with just Nitros. So they were just running off fizz and dashes and they were taking high every single game of winning. So I have very, very high hopes for Clicks and Vino in the Texas land. It really does raise the question, however, how are Epic Games changing it? a massive part of the season literally a week before the LAN event I don't know Fortnite remains to be the most uncompetitive game I've ever seen from a company standpoint but it's all good it gives the players a chance to adapt and also change their drop spot even if they only do have a week these coaches are not being paid enough I'm telling you if your team has a coach like Sven or Raz then they are working overtime this week because they have like four teams each and obviously the meta has changed they're all four going to land and they've got to figure out the new meta and give them a drop give them looting routes give them surge bases about their meta i also have very high hopes for cami and setu this meta they this is the type of meta they they nail honestly they nail this type of meta and i can't wait to see what they're gonna do one more note guys the dashes make sure you don't dash by accident when you're mantling up jump and then mantle up the last second that is the way you don't waste dashes on mantling it's not any slower you just gotta wait wait till you're at the top of your jump and slightly coming back down and then press a to mantle trust me it does work so you should be running your choice of shotgun either gatekeeper or sovereign you should be then running your choice of ar but preferably burst in a more stacked lobby with a scope with a red dot if you haven't got a red dot go with the striker if your controller go with the striker because the burst has a very little aim assist pretty much none i think and the striker has a little bit i'm led to believe a small little bit so go with the striker if your controller 100 percent of the time control play should also be wearing gatekeeper because that does has aim assist as opposed to the sovereign which does not so it's really only the keyboard players that get to the side between the sovereign and the gatekeeper and the burst and the regular ar but then I'd recommend medkits and minis or medkits and bigs. Probably minis because they last a little bit longer in my opinion. And then you can also carry fits. This is for duos as well. You can carry bigs and minis one player and minis and medkits the other player. And then both have fits. This means you have the absolute most amount of heals. You're both carrying triple heals. You both get dash water. One of you's got gatekeeper and maybe the burst AR. And the other one has got the sovereign and the regular AR. I know this just seems like a great way to function your loadouts as a duo. With that being said guys, make sure you are checking out the video on screen and also if you want to become a pro player this season with the new meta changing, it's important to get ahead of it and that's why you should sign up to Solo Superstars. It is the best, best place to learn from the best pros in the world and the best coaches in the world. That being said, I'll see you in a little bit. Have a good one.